Hey v &E, this is Brittany Feldot, pastoral associate here at Cape Cod Church, and excited to share some of the ways that we are trying to serve others during this time and try and stay connected with our own people. And looking forward to hearing some of your ideas as well. Uh, so first, how we're trying to serve our community. Uh, we've had many people in our churches ask, hey, how can we help others during this time? And we decided that the best way we could have a significant impact locally is by partnering with organizations who are already doing really good work. So we partnered with Neighborhood Falmouth and Elder Care Services of Cape Cod, who both have programs uh, to deliver food to seniors in their homes. And as you can imagine, uh, they're seeing an increased need for services during this time and a dwindling pool of volunteers because many of the volunteers they already have are seniors. So we've been trying to funnel new volunteers to them and help them walk through those processes, get Corey checked and everything else so that they can jump on board and help those organizations locally. And we think that might be the best way for us to have a significant impact in our community. Uh, second, internally we've put together a care team of people who are willing to volunteer to call a senior because we realize that we have uh, many people in our own database over the age of 70 uh, who we already have their name and phone numbers and we can get in touch with them to see how they're doing and combat any potential isolation or feelings of loneliness and meet their needs. So what we've been doing is connecting people who are willing to make a call with this list of those over the age of 70 just to check in see how they're doing, uh, kind of lend a voice of encouragement, and also see if they have any needs we can help them out with. And this kind of serves both uh, to help develop community and give people the opportunity to make that personal connection, but also to hear about needs that we might not otherwise uh, hear about without making that intentional call. And then finally, we've put together, like many of you, a benevolence fund to help folks who might uh, be facing uh, financial instability at this time. And we went out and purchased uh, many grocery uh, cards for those folks who are expressing that need. And then we also wanted to be intentional about serving other churches during this time because we recognize that uh, we're all facing kind of an unprecedented situation. And there's a couple ways that we've done that. First, internally, we created a letter template in the case that one of our church members contracts COVID-19. That hasn't happened for us yet, but we are prepared in the case that it will and could happen. So we've put together a letter on how we would respond to that to our church members who would notify, kind of outlining our guidelines and how we've prevented against and prepared for this and just set a plan in motion for how we're going to respond to that if and when the occasion arises. And we reached out to all the other churches in our region saying, hey, if you could use this email template, uh, please feel free to use it and adjust it to your situation. And we're very willing to share that with anybody else who might like to participate. Uh, we also reached out to other churches and set up a fund that uh, helps other churches in the case of financial need, because we know that eight weeks or potentially longer without an in-person congregation can have a significant impact on giving. And so we wanna be prepared for that. So we've set aside a fund to help pastors or churches that might be struggling during this time. And we reached out to our own, connect, our own network across Cape Cod saying, hey, if you know of anybody who could benefit from this or whose church could benefit from this, please let us know. And so far we've had great response to that as well. Because really we are all in this together and we want to advance the church in this time as a unified body. And finally, a couple ideas for how we've connected with our people internally. Uh, like many of you, we have been live streaming our services on Sundays, uh, but we also wanted to be intentional about developing community on those live streams. Um, so a couple of things that we've done is develop a list of best practices for our staff as chat hosts and moderators and how we welcome people and make them feel seen and heard. Even something as simple as liking a comment or responding or saying hello when somebody jumps on can make them feel part of that online community in a way they might not if they're just watching uh, the screen. And then we also decided to leverage our Sunday volunteers in ways that mirror the roles they traditionally have already. So like many of you, we have a first impressions team of people who greet people at the doors, who hand out bulletins, who man our welcome and connect desks. And we just reached out to them intentionally and said, hey, we would love for you to continue the volunteer work that you do 
on our online platforms. So what does that look like? How do you make someone feel welcomed? Well, here's a couple practical ways you can do that. Jump on your normal service, choose a platform, like other people's comments, welcome them, uh, respond to any prompts during the service, and help us build that online community because we really think that that can be a powerful way to help people stay connected. And we want to leverage our volunteers and help them stay connected as well. So I hope that a couple of these ideas have been helpful for you for your own context and looking forward to hearing some of yours as well. Bye everybody.